invite you to be seated. Before I get into the Word this morning, as you, many of you know, many of us as clergy were at the United Church of Christ uh, General Synod last week, and I want to thank specifically Reverend Dr. Michael Diaz, who brought the Word for us last week, and I believe did an amazing job. Over the next uh, couple of months or so, you're going to be hearing uh, other voices. You're going to be hearing uh, Reverend Aaron preach for us and also Reverend Andrea preach for us. So uh, look at the list on the back of the bulletin uh, in the coming weeks, and you'll see when they're preaching, and then you'll know when to show up. <laughs> Let us pray together. God, we are so thankful for your Holy Spirit that ministers to us wherever we are on our journey. Thank you for that grace and for that love that will always be present as we open our hearts and minds to the possibilities of God's grace and God's glory. Thank you for your Word that travels the distance through time and generations to meet with us this day, a Word that is open for us, a Word that reminds us that God is still speaking, that God is still present. So illuminate our hearts and our minds so that we might have ears to hear you this day. And through all of the emotion of this day, may your truth set us free. And so, God, I pray now that you would touch my lips of clay. Mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day, and may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In the name of Jesus the Christ, in whom we pray. Amen. So today we do, we begin a new sermon series uh, for the month of July, for anniversary month, when we reflect on the church in and out. Uh, we remind ourselves of what it means to be community. We remind ourselves what it means to be a people of Christ. And throughout this month, we'll be referencing several aspects of the Gospels and of the Scriptures that remind us that we are called to be a people that are one. Uh, that we're called to be a people beyond just our own individuality, but reminded that we are in this together, that we are a people on the way, we are a people on a journey, and whilst we may be a people of difference and a people who experience God differently, we are still one people. We are a community, we are a church, we are a people of a liberating God. And today as we gather, we think about the, the essential need for us as a people, especially on today, to be that one, to be the body of Christ, to be the people who have a faith that transforms us, to have a faith that moves beyond just our own human limitations. In our Scriptures today, we heard two various accounts of the way in which we are seen as one. First, there was Paul's letter to the early church at Corinth, and for us to understand the fullness of this text, we need to understand that in this first letter, the writer is addressing some of the divisions within the church. This was not just a, a, a statement from Paul about how the Holy Spirit works. This was a statement from Paul to encourage those early believers to, to move beyond their individuality and to understand that there is a collectiveness about the people of God. Paul was trying to help them to understand that there is one spirit, there is one body, but that that Holy Spirit shows up in the different manifestations of who we are. And that we should not be afraid of the different manifestations of the Holy Spirit, but rather we should celebrate those manifestations because they all lead us toward God. Paul was trying to help them to understand that no matter what their individual gift is, whatever their individual state of life is, if we would keep our eyes fixed on the one, the author and perfecter of our faith, that we might be the one body of Christ whether our gift was speaking in tongues or administration or if our gift was understanding the needs of the world or if our gift was just having faith enough that we could move mountains or get through one day. That was all the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who challenges us to become more than we dare to even believe ourselves. And in that interconnectedness, in that understanding of the Holy Spirit's moving and being amongst us, 
When we bring those gifts together, we are better in the collective than we are individually. We are, we are more than conquerors when we stand on the promises of Jesus. Paul wanted those early believers to get it, to understand it. And it's from that essence of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that the church was founded, and as they gathered, they understood the complexity of relationships, the complexity of living together, the complexity of living through the good times and living through the rough times. If there was a word for us today, that is it that we must gather together, moving through the difficult times as well as the good times. We are the people of God, and perhaps today, beyond all days, we prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that the one thing that unites us is the Holy Spirit, the presence of a God, the reality of a God, a God that shows up in each and every one of us, a God that moves us beyond the questions, that moves us in a statement of faith that transforms our lives. Just the fact that we should gather today bears witness to the testimony of a God of love and a God of grace and a God of truth. Jesus, too, wanted to address this sense of being one. And in John's gospel, the the writer reminds us that we are one. In fact, he goes to the great pains of the lengths of reminding us that we are one. And that as one body, as one people, that when we bring those differences together and celebrate our differences, when we gather together as the people of God, there should be something that happens. It shouldn't just be a a, a rather eclectic gathering of people. It should be a people with purpose. It it should be a people who manifest love. It should be a people who are are journeying together to express their faith in ways that make a difference in the world. You, You see, the idea of a church is a people who want to bring justice to the world. The idea of a church is not just a gathering of bodies on a Sunday morning, but a gathering of people who want to do the hard work of being adults in their lives. A gathering of people who want to embrace this divinity of the Holy Spirit, this this gospel of grace and truth and love, this gospel of transformation that is making a difference. Because if we don't make a difference, then who are we? If we don't make a difference in our lives or in the life of the world, if we don't transform the world, then do we really experience the the essence and truth of God? Or are we just a people who just like to show up on Sunday morning? That really is the question for us as a a church and as a people, a people who are living both inside and outside of the church. Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ, not only are we called to transform the life of this body, but we are also called to transform the lives of others. That through our witness, through our ability to to live together, to dwell together, that in that ability we connect. We connect with each other, and we connect with the holy. That is church. Church in and out, a a church body who will celebrate together and a church body who will mourn together. That's the beauty. That's the beauty of community. As I was reflecting on being here this morning, there are times when, you know, I know I'm, I'm paid to be here, but there are times when I need to be here. And this morning, I needed to be here. I needed to connect with those who I see on a regular basis. I I needed to connect with the love of God. I needed to connect in ways that remind me that God is still speaking. I needed to connect with this body of Christ because if I connect with this body of Christ, it makes tomorrow a little bit better. If, If I can connect with the holy that lives within each and every one of us, it makes tomorrow possible. That's the good news of Jesus. 
And it means that we connect. We don't need to, to all believe the same or to understand the same way of God, but we must connect with each other. It was so beautiful on Friday night for those of you who were able to be a part of the bowlathon. I've never seen so many of us good bowlers in one place. but to see the ways in which we went beyond just the worship experience, to connect our lives together, to have fun together, to play together, to get to know one another beyond just the, the pew in which we sit on a Sunday morning. That's what shift has been all about for us as a congregation is to build relationship with each other, so that when we hurt, we have someone we can talk to. When we have pain, there is someone we can reach out to. Connecting as the body of Christ, allowing the gifts that are manifest within us to be of service to one another and ultimately to the world. That's what Jesus encourages us to do. That's why Jesus built His community of 12 those disciples, that early gathering of people who were able to get the message and then get the message out. They were a people who were on the way. They weren't perfect. Not one of us in this place is perfect, and if you are, please come and show me how that is made possible in life. But they were vulnerable enough to express the beauty of God within them because they believed in themselves, and they believed that they could make a difference. They believed that their gift, their life, their who they were, was important to the new realm of God. And through those deep connections with each other, they began to have adult relationship. They began to express their vulnerability, their doubts, their unbelief, and expressed it in such a ways that it was okay. They expressed it in such a way that they could grow through them because they knew what it meant to connect deeply with each other. Every single Sunday we come to church and beyond the church walls when we do ministry together, we're called to connect. We're called to make a difference. Lee made a difference. That's why so many of us are wearing bow ties this morning. Believe me, this is two things strapped around my neck this morning. <laughs> Lee was noticed, and Lee made a difference. And it was because he connected so deeply and so profoundly, not because he was Lee Covington, but because he had the gift of the Holy Spirit of hospitality within him. And he allowed that gift to be used in the freedom of the church so that every single one of us, whenever we encountered him, found a gentle spirit and a gentle man. Was he perfect? No. But did he lead from his vulnerability? Yes. Did He lead in such a way that, that, that there is an outpouring of, of grace and an outpouring of love and an outpouring of, of sympathy and moving a spirit within us? Yes, there is, because He allowed His life to connect with us. And we, just like Paul in the letter to the church at Corinth, and just like Jesus and the writer of the Gospel of John, reminds us that we must be one. We must be the body of Christ. We must be a people who don't gossip about one another. We must be a people who will not tear one another down, but lift each other up. And that only happens when we rub shoulders with each other, when we connect deeply with one another, when we care about one another. And through those deep connections with each other, both in and outside the church, we then make a difference. We then make Jesus real in our lives. You know, as human beings, I think sometimes we like to tear one another down more than we lift one another up. There seems to be this human psychology in our world right now that we, we can't just celebrate who we are without making ourselves feel more puffed up than the person who is next to us. That's not the purpose of Jesus. The purpose of Jesus is to love on one another. 
And if we don't have love for one another, how on earth can the world find this love that we preach about so passionately every single Sunday here at Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ? That is who we are. I hear testimony from people who walk into this church every single Sunday and said, I, I've never felt such love in this place. But if we can't take that love beyond the walls of the church, then it's just contained here. And that's not what the church of Jesus Christ is about. We are called to care for one another, to deeply connect with one another, and to love one another. As I says Jesus, have loved you, to pray for one another, to hold one another, to embrace one another, and to find ways in which we will not speak badly of one another, but rather we will give each other the benefit of the doubt, the benefit of God's grace and God's love. This is not Lee's memorial that will come but it is a time for us to raise up one servant leader within our congregation who expressed the gifts of the Holy Spirit and was not afraid to let them be amongst us. And those are the same requests that God has of each and every one of us, to connect deeply and to love, to love even when we have questions to love even when we have not had the courage to go and speak to another individual about the gossip we might be having about them. Believe me, Cathedral of Hope, we're not perfect. And I hear all sorts of stories every now and again about the ways in which we don't love on one another. I want to encourage us this morning to lay those things down and to lift up the power of the Holy Spirit and to love on one another so deeply and so passionately that we can see the love of God in this place. To see it so powerfully and so passionately. Sometimes as pastor, I'm the focus of that gossip. Believe me, I hear it. <laughs> if I did half the things I've been accused of in the last two years, I'm not sure I would still be stood here this morning. <laughs> the love of God that passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds on the vision of Christ so that we might be agents of transformation connecting ourselves with each other Connecting ourselves with the world, connecting ourselves in prayer. May the blessed and holy one enable us this day to pray with and for one another and to not allow to come from our mouths those things that would separate us, but rather that would unite us, that would cause us to be more than we ever thought we could be, and to call us to be Christ in the world. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is God's will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. You are important to me, I need you to survive. I need you, you need me, we're all a part of God's body, stand with me. Agree with me, we're all a part of God's body. It 
It is God's will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. You are important to me. I need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. I pray. We need one another in order to survive. God bless you, Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ.